Hello guys, welcome back to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. Today our topic is about the difference between ductility and brittleness. So I will explain these two material properties uh, with the help of this uh, diagram and with the help of the stress strain graph. So let's consider uh, this is any material you can see uh, it may be steel or concrete or something uh, and I will apply the tensile load on this material. So let's consider this is the P load uh, acting on this material uh, to create the tension in this material. Right? So now I am drawing the stress strain graph here on the left side. You can see here uh, this is the stress graph, stress on the y-axis presented by sigma and strain on the x-axis represented by epsilon. So when the load is applied from the starting point, so this material will somehow stretches, start stretching and I can say that with the increase of the load on this area, so the stresses will increase and the stress is equal to the load over the cross-section area of this uh, of this material. So when the load starts, the stress is also in start in the material. So increase in the stress will increase in the strain and the uh, and the of material. So it will uh, follow the hook law up to this point. And and when this is a brittle material, so what happens after the after reaching the elastic limit? So it will follow the yield limit then. Uh, maybe for up to this point, it will follow the elastic limit. We can see the elasticity is here, and then it will follow also the yield limit after crossing the yield limit. And this material will now break out by increasing the load. So from the starting, when the load is zero here, the stress was also zero. So when the load was increasing, the stress also increases, and uh, and and the series uh, the strain was also going to increase. And it crosses the elastic limit here. After the elastic limit, it reaches to the yield point. You can see this is the yield point. And after that, uh, it uh, fracture out. So why? Because it is the uh, it shows the brittle behavior. It does not have the plastic deformation. Uh, it does not store any further energy in the system. So we call this type of material is the brittle material, because after reaching uh, to the yield point, it does not uh, uh, take any further further energy it does not store any further energy uh, to elongate but it uh, break out into two pieces directly so we call this uh, that this material is known as the brittle material uh, and the energy stored in this material uh, can be represented by this graph right so this is the energy stored here like this one so this is the brittle material it does not show much deformation after the elastic limit uh, it shows very less plastic deformation. So we call this type of material as a brittle material. Now coming to the ductility. What is the ductility of the uh, material? A ductility is the property of the material uh, in which the material absorb more energy and more plastic deformation occur in the material. For example, consider the same material has been pushed up with the load P, right? So when this material is being uh, tensioned by the load P, the same stresses creates in this object and the same diagram, yeah, I, can, I can draw the diagram for the uh, for this uh, the, the tile material is here and this is the strain epsilon and this is the stress by sigma. So when the load is applied, the stress also increases and the strain also increases in the material and it reaches to the elastic limit and after that it reaches to the plastic, uh, sorry the yield limit and after this, uh, the material also uh, going into the plastic deformation more, more, and more, and it reaches the ultimate strength here. The ultimate strength we represent by a few here, and then uh, it break out at this point. It fracture out the material fractures at this end point. So we can we can see here uh, it goes uh, more. It goes more into the plastic deformation uh, after the yield limit. While here in the brittle material, uh, the range there is no plastic deformation or very less plastic deformation after the yield limit. While here in this case, uh, there is too much area being covered uh, by the uh, by the plastic deformation of the material. So we can call this type of material 
uh, is, the, is the ductile material because uh, this is the uh, energy which is more stored uh, in the brittle material while the whole energy stored by the ductile material uh, is the area under the curve. So we can, say, we can see here uh, that the more energy has been stored uh, by the ductile material because uh, it stored more energy and it is the ability to elongate and store the plast plastic energy as well as the elastic energy. Uh, so we call this type of material as the ductile material. And we always want uh, to have a ductile behavior of our structure uh, so that uh, it can absorb the elastic as well as the plastic deformation uh, so that it achieves a good designable uh, structure. So this was the difference between the ductile ductility and the brittleness. Uh, these are the uh, two opposite terms. The brittle material uh, is that which do not have the plastic deformation or less plastic deformation uh, and uh, it just broke out uh, into two pieces. Uh, it's also called the catastrophic behavior of the material. While the ductility uh, is the ability of a material to deform, uh, deform, deformed and up to the, up to the last um, up to the last point where it fractures and it stores uh, the elastic as well as the plastic uh, energy uh, and, it, and it is the more toughness uh, because the more energy has been absorbed in this uh, curve. You can see the more energy and here the less energy has been uh, uh, stored in this material. Hope you guys understand the difference between the ductility and brittleness and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.